Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achind. Now, a lot has been spoken about the India-US visit on this channel and many other channels. But let's look at the Indian Air Force, which is where a lot of focus has been with regards to the engines, which is where a lot of focus is with regards to the drones. The drones, of course, some of them are going to the other forces as well, but predominantly it's an air asset. What is the technology coming in? Where is the Indian Air Force going to get benefited? And how can you boost the capabilities of the Indian Air Force? One of the most important questions we need to ask. We know the status of the Air Force. We know where the squadrons are. We know all that stuff. And I'd request this discussion from all the viewers as well to be kept on the future rather than the past. Because there is then we, we, we'll be able to actually have a more clear-cut discussion as to where we are headed, most importantly. For that, I have with me a Marshal Bedi. Sir, thank you so much for taking out the time to join me on Dev Talks. It's always a pleasure and a learning experience to uh, interact with you. And I am sure this topic, you will bring about something really unique where I think we will be able to learn. And if, God willing, the vibrations are correct, I think things will also work out for the country as well. So, greeting and welcome. Thank you, Bhadi. Thank you. Thank you, Adi. Likewise, it's always a uh, pleasure to be uh, with you. So you, you've given most of the introduction. I think uh, I can just uh, uh, jump in. Uh, you know, this uh, visit is very, everyone has given it some names, you know, landmark visit, <clears throat> unprecedented visit, you know, one of the most important visit. But the, uh, it's a facet, you know, from my point of view, when I look at it, now uh, this visit, all of us have followed it closely. I have never seen a visit uh, which has been monitored so closely. Mm -hmm. So much had been talked about before the visit, during the visit, and after the visit. Each and every minute was, you know, uh, analyzed threadbare. Now, what does it mean? To me, uh, it implies that uh, uh, three things primarily, that when you talk so much about a visit, uh, essentially what is happening in that visit? Uh, one is it develops uh, understanding, clear understanding, because repeatedly those things are being talked about, they are being uh, monitored. And once there is understanding, uh, that brings in transparency. Like now nobody is in the dark what happened during Prime Minister's visit uh, to USA. Uh, almost everybody knows everything who wanted to know. Anyone who wanted to know knows it. And once there is transparency, that brings accountability because people are now asking questions that what will come, how much percentage, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, because uh, it has made people uh, knowledgeable and not that you're groping in the dark as to what went in there between closed doors or behind the closed doors. So this is from that point of view, I think this uh, visit has been uh, very unique. Now, when you come to uh, particularly the Air Force capability or the, what Air Force will gain out of it, uh, you know, uh, two major things have been talked about, you know, for the Air Force, uh, as if they will impact it most, of course they will. Uh, that is one is engines and the other is the reapers drones of course like you said very rightly they are coming for all three services but an asset in the air is used by everyone you know the information given by it will uh, everyone will use it the uh, other aspect of this uh, you know uh, visit is that the keywords used you know trustworthiness or interdependence etc mm. etc et and uh, I think Prime Minister has been uh, at his uh, best. Uh, very, uh, I liked uh, in that uh, his address in the Congress, where he, uh, where he used the AI to say that it's not only artificial intelligence, it's America India time also. You know, I, he got so many standing ovations uh, for that. So, having seen all that, uh, now let's come to the uh, specifics. We'll get this. Uh, engine and reapers firstly out of the way. And then I want to touch upon certain technologies which have been less talked about, but will help the Air Force a great deal. Now, we are not getting into the economics of it in the sense uh, there is a lot coming in during in trade, in economics, you know, total investments, like uh, they say Micron uh, investing $800 million, then or VSK, you know, which is uh, building their vertical solar panels is also mm -hmm. investing mm -hmm. about $1.2 billion. So overall, there is a lot of uh, uh, 
uh, trade exchange taking place, but keeping it confined to the technology. As far as jet engine is concerned, we saw the technicality of jet engine as to how this is important uh, for India. We have been struggling at it uh, since long. What will change now? Now, uh, a lot of people have this doubt that earlier also it was promised that technology will come under DTTI. You know, that is Defense Technology and Trade Initiative. It was with us and it was promised that same that, you know, uh, G technology will be transferred to uh, India. And then suddenly in 2019, something happened. It just went flat. So what will change now? Uh, it's important to understand, I guess, that DDTI was a different arrangement, in my opinion. Uh, that is the government to government kind of initiative where they decided that, OK, we will have a defense technology transfer, etc. But when it comes to private companies, I suppose, uh, they remain uh, accountable and responsible to their shareholders, you know, because they're private companies. Of course. So how much of technology would they have transferred? The core technology in uh, engines uh, was anyone's uh, guess. And somehow, probably, they were not able to do so. Uh, so that uh, niche technology, that hot uh, technology or hot uh, area technology, uh, engine, uh, you know, has cold part and hot part. Uh, like, you know, one is just the front portion with intake, etc., which remains cold. And the hot part is, which is burning and turbine comes into that. So it's a hot technology. Uh, which is missing uh, with us. So what has changed now? I think what has changed now is that now the MOU so far is between GE and HAL. So they are both, it is a G's commitment and not really just government to government uh, commitment. You know, that like difference between the deal which is uh, on the drone side or on the Reaper side, which is FMS. You know, in FMS, it Probably the government cannot enforce a private company that you will do this, you will do that, you will transfer this. You know, in India, it's different because we have only DPSUs working in uh, this uh, sector. So if the government commits to someone, then DPSU probably will uh, have no choice but to do it. But it's not the same uh, when you uh, talk of those uh, private companies. So now when it's an MOU between GE and HL, I uh, feel or I believe that a lot more credible transfer uh, can uh, come our way, okay? And they have promised that that hot pot technology transfer uh, will take place. How much? Now, that's a, uh, anyone's understanding, 80% looks a lot when they say 80% technology will be transferred. I personally have a little, uh, you know, it will unfold when the detailed uh, contract is signed as to what exactly is coming. Uh, you know, when we say 80% and you say, okay, it's okay to make a beginning anywhere. I mean, we aren't really making a beginning. We have a Kaveri engine, which is at 75 kilonewton. So it's not that we woke up yesterday and now we make beginning. We are already at some stage. So now from there, when you come that, okay, 80% technology uh, will be transferred. How is it going to be measured? You know, which part of engine uh, constitutes, what percentage of technology mm -hmm. uh, will have to be seen very, very uh, carefully. You know, that uh, now uh, another aspect is that I hope it does not fall into the trap of 80% by value or by cost, you know, which generally like our DAP uh, says, I hope it is more refined than that. Because the moment you start talking in terms of cost, you fall into a trap because then the cost, you know, includes so many other things, your buildings, your infrastructure, your people. Employed, 80% Eighty percent tech. So how the tech is going to be measured? measured. Like you know, even now when we say in DAP, you know, in our defense uh, procurement, when you say that a component must have Indian percent content, hmm. okay, Indian percent content is measured by cost. So I I am just uh, you know alluding to my apprehension that I hope it is not that. I am just speaking loud. Okay, I hope it is purely technological and it is properly uh, measured you know i have a pen let's say i want to make a pen i don't know what to make now it depends how much technology percentage i accord to uh, what like you know if mm -hmm. i say lip is only 20 percent and the rest is 80 percent then probably you are again uh, left short so hopefully the credible technology uh, which gives us boost boost in the sense that it makes me go a step further you know may not to make me reach the end because uh, that will take time it will be you know how much trust you build up what is your capability to absorb now that is the 
question like you know the second part of our argument that with each thing what does india need to do even if someone is ready to give you the technology you have to be ready to absorb it so in indian uh, context in our infrastructure in our capability in our manpower we will have to develop the capability that we are able to quickly absorb that technology and uh, like you say no not coming to us in a passive way that i am sitting waiting for someone to give me technology i'll have to extract it to the extract proactiveness it. So, mm. proactiveness yes you will have to be proactive and you will have to extract the technology now how much of aggressiveness we show in that uh, you know that is what we need to be ready if we just sort of sit now very in a kind of euphoria that okay mm. 80% engine technology is coming now we will you know make engines etc etc and the litmus test or the evidence will be what improvement comes in our kaveri engine because that is our baby that is our home grown uh, uh, you know uh, engine true, true. that has to improve okay so the technology that i gain from uh, this ge and hal uh, partnership must translate into some technology improvement or some capability improvement in my kaveri engine because aim is not, mm. yeah not aim is not only to make uh, 414 engines in india aim mm. is to make engines in india 414 424 mm. for anything yeah I, and and more kaveris and the types of kaveris you know i i need engines for my uavs we need engines for so many other applications so i should be able to produce the engine of the desired uh you know kilonewton capacity uh at home in totality okay that is ultimate aim so uh, absorption of technology will play uh, a much greater role i do hope that that will uh, happen uh when we come to the reapers now okay mq9 very potent uh, platform uh, it has been used by navy it's not that uh, navy had to uh, you know the sea guardians on lease for almost 3 years now november 20 they came in and uh, uh, chief of naval staff was on record uh, to say that you know uh, he, when he listed its capability to say that it can fly 33 hours and you know since they are leasing they have flown some 12000 hours on uh, these reapers so when he says 33 hours i'm sure they have tested it and flown it i mean he is not quoting a figure from wikipedia so if that is a capability which is uh, uh, coming to us along with uh, weaponry but what must be understood very clearly is how is it going to boost our capability in which way now you know uh, there is a lot of uh, talk on that it can fire hellfire missile okay hellfire is not peculiar only to reaper our apaches can also do that okay we have that but what is hellfire missile uh, just a short you know i'll take 2 3 minutes to say what is hellfire missile that can it be used in war okay it's an anti tank missile it was developed as an anti tank kind of missile as a range of just about 7 to 11 kilometers uh, you know depending on from what height it is launched what speed it is launched etc now you are not going to send this 100 million uh, dollar uh, aircraft into contested air space you know it can't even run it has just 400 kilometers of speed and so far it has been employed only uh, in kind of benign environments you know uh, in afghanistan in iraq in killing the air defense is not that strong air defense is not there the up air opposition is not there okay any kind okay air defense and we saw what happened to the reaper uh, over uh, sea you know when the crimea yes whatever, okay mm. uh, took place now what happens is uh, so if i'm not going to deploy it in a contested air space then uh, when am i going to use it and this hellfire anti tank missile are we going to really knock off enemy tanks in in war by hellfire fired by reaper hellfire you know it, it has a tandem warhead probably was the first missile to have tandem warhead you know what is tandem warhead is that there is like the name suggests one warhead behind the other now what did you need why did you need two warheads okay it was that since the tanks were being busted the missile would enter the tank uh, you know skin so they started protecting tanks so you would put armor on the tank now you keep putting armor they keep uh, making faster missiles so it would keep becoming heavier and heavier till they invented reactive armor now what was reactive armor reactive armor is nothing that when projectile hits it it has got explosive which bursts it it bursts outwards and expels those the missiles fragments so that the inner skin is uh, saved 
so you had no uh, effect it is like if i can draw an analogy if you have a house somebody wants to pierce your wall okay and you put a wall outside it how much strong wall can you put you know you a guy can have a faster projectile and now you have a wall which has got explosive in it which which flies outward so let's say there is a guy on uh, to draw an analogy on a uh, you know projectile on a motorbike or something it hits your wall it explodes and kills that so your inner wall is safe See. so to overcome yeah. that you needed a tandem warhead implying that the first warhead small one was just required to uh, initiate that explosive of the reactor armor so once that got expended the second warhead came and uh, went in yes pierce the thing okay so that was to overcome reactive warhead is the tandem warhead was used this is what this missile has got there are many versions of it you know they are trying to improve range etc i believe there is a 9x uh, Uh, there is an x version okay uh, agm 14x version uh, in which the some sword blades come out you know uh, ah, that's yeah this uh, this guy was killed with that no sir so many uh, was killed with that probably ah, iranian general uh -huh. okay no 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 so that this is, guy in kabul uh, that uh, al qaeda guy Yeah, Slomani. I think. The, guys, no, if Iranian, you guys remember the name, please uh, write down. No, Iranian general. The... Iranian general. There is another guy that oh, was killed. In Al Qaeda in Iraq. Kabul. Kabul, sir. Okay. Dawahiri. Okay. okay. Thanks, Dawahirian chimp. <laughs> okay, Dawahiri. one of them probably. Yeah, maybe I'm mixing up. Okay. So that is to avoid collateral damage. Okay. That means that it does not. Spinning, it, you yeah. are explaining. now so essentially what i'm saying they were used for targeted killing now in indian scenario or in our scenario we do not have this philosophy of yet targeted killing i mean you're not going to send them over pakistan or china to uh, do targeted killing right so where will they be used in offensive role okay probably anti terror in sight or uh, border skirmishes you know benign environment you know you have a doklam kind of situation or that kind of situation tomorrow where there is complete air is not there etc and some uh, skirmish is there and somebody intrudes you know in your territory then this will come to a, a good use in my opinion i'm sure air force i mean the guys in uniform uh, are going through their tactics but whatever i know uh, they, they, it can be put to a good use uh, there the most important uh, you know aspect of this is going to be its ability to stay up in the air like he said 30 hours at a time and monitor situation continuously you know our isr has been our biggest problem you know we have been talking about it from kargil days you know subsequently uh, you know, we have been depending on only hirons and i mean searchers are very uh, small uh, kind of birds you know not generally used uh, in our hilly area can't be used because of their uh, altitude limitation hirons very uh, small in number isr has been the biggest bane satellites we talked you know they are not uh, very uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, time wise not readily available also readily available also so this is what what is going to be there is that they will build up a huge a huge library for you you know over a period of time where you can monitor threat so biggest use is going to be a kind of during uh, peace time okay but in contested air space yes to some an extent i think it will be uh, and uh, you know you're not going to now attach some air defense aircraft with it you see that you you know if this is going to be threatened now you need to aircraft to guard it then it it does not uh, uh, it's it defeats the purpose of launching an unmanned platform if it is guarded by two manned platforms you know manned unmanned teaming is a different concept you know we are we are not getting into that we are we in this kind of thing we were talking only uh, protecting that uh, you know asset okay so this is the quantum jump in uh, capability of air force or all the armed forces will come in your surveillance all kinds of surveillance you know uh, it's not that it has the same cameras and others uh, or the sensors which others uh, have got much improved versions you know it's a uh, synthetic aperture radar it's optical cameras it's elent capability communication intelligence you name it you know it it is uh, far superior and persistence you know it brings uh, the element of uh, persistence 
and of course uh, high tech machinery you know its downtime will be less its servicing is much easier it will be available to you uh, much more than uh, other platforms etc etc now quickly coming to some aspects you know uh, under i set what you uh, you know uh, visions in um, or in emerging technologies critical emerging technology some other uh, uh, what do you call agreements have also been signed uh, which will bring in uh, a lot of capability uh, i guess okay now uh, uh, nasa has you know uh, said that it will collaborate with isro okay it will help it uh, in uh, launching an indian astronaut on iss in uh, probably uh, sometime and it will it has already done i think uh, uh, collaboration with two or signed up an agreement with two indian startups uh, yeah. on artificial intelligence and uh, some other uh, aspect okay it's going to help us in our gaganyaan mission also if required okay and most important launching of uh, nisar satellite what they call nasa isro sar satellite okay there are there is lot of importance of uh, sar satellite because it is all weather all uh, time of the day you know day night and since most of them are launched on an oblique kind of uh, path or, or, or elliptical uh, orbit oblique orbit i would say not polar orbit then the revisit time is very frequent you know mm. it is uh, it can go 6 7 times in a day rather than once in 6 7 days you know so the greater capability is uh, much greater capability is also going to uh, come to us uh, you know uh, from that now uh, when you come to semiconductor now people may say that it is only for industry or civil engineering or uh, something okay semiconductors are everywhere most of the technology that indian air force uses or is going to use will need semiconductors and how does this help how does signing a contract with micron or micron coming to india help you know it is a kind of uh, initiation not tevan we know it tevan's capacity to make uh, uh, semiconductors okay why is it not coming to india probably it's waiting some other credible person to come and start doing something in india and see that you know because relatively it's a small country cannot take chance it does not know that if it enters here you know does something will it succeed will it not succeed but once usa puts it foot uh, footprint here you know it's a kind of established thing then it may find uh, other people also jumping in and you know coming and we having access to this critical technology you know which is uh, required in everything it's required in your uh, artificial intelligence 3d printing internet of things Uh, you name a thing that you know such technologies uh, required okay now uh, there are there is a joint task force on 5g 6g okay which is going to be uh, uh, very useful uh, to us and when you come to uh, you know agreements on artificial intelligence and quantum computing okay or quantum technology now see that all this that we said reaper is going to do by staying 30 hours uh, in the air the kind of information that give it gives you who's going to analyze that information hmm, hmm. are we going to put some four or five guys on the desk and uh, analyze that information you know now you need ai i at times uh, wish that there is an ai engine uh, you know my phone which uh, differentiates between different whatsapp messages from good morning to some crucial message coming telling me something okay i love people that people have already <laughs> people have already started missing the mails you know sometimes you send a mail to somebody and he tells you uh, sorry it just got lost because the, your mailbox is a you know in a, uh, kind of inundated with the the technology if you had an uh, ai engine there which told you that you know only this 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 probably uh, would uh, help you so i this is just a very simple analogy but now i would definitely need that if this is this uh, bird not one of them you know eight of them only for the air force and 31 totally in the indian skies are going to you know load you with uh, pictures and pictures and data and data you need very high uh, computing uh, you know power high power computing uh, is required 
and this is another aspect where india needs to pay attention that you probably may end up having this reaper for 30 hours in the air but if you do not have the capability to analyze the information that it is giving you that do not you don't have the capability to separate wheat from chaff then actually you're wasting effort you know we will have to build that technology uh, in parallel so what happens is we are uh, you know we have decent uh, uh, capability in software and with these uh, agreements coming in these area I mean we should not uh, uh, sleep over it and be careful or uh, be ahead of the curve that okay i am ready to receive the information what these birds are going to give otherwise what will happen is you will not utilize them properly and having spent so much money taxpayers hard earned money on this you know uh, giving you the technology that you always wanted and now if you are not able to utilize it properly it is a waste of effort so this is another aspect where we need to uh, pay attention another critical aspect you know which probably people uh, may have missed is the critical minerals you know there is a msp uh, sign uh, which is deep. mineral security partnership okay we just launched it's, a mineral policy also mineral policy also and you know minerals like lithium cobalt nickel etc you know they are uh, going uh, we, we are going to be having a, a kind of partnership in that now how does what does air force got to do with these minerals now all these minerals help you in making batteries you know they are critical minerals for making uh, high power batteries and where do i need batteries i need battery in my every drone you know, tomorrow all your drones which are required to, every drone does not start up with engine. You know, the battery operated because reaction time is required uh, very quick. You know, you are quickly required to launch the drone or anti-drone or something. So you require batteries, batteries which are uh, imported. So in major system of your, you know, the heart of the drone, if uh, I don't have the capability to make that, then uh, there is a serious uh, issue. With this project, you know, coming uh, in our way, it will boost our capability to uh, improve, you know, uh, our uh, battery making capacity, which will give a great boost uh, to uh, us in the, um, uh, what I call, uh, I mean, drone capability. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, National Science Foundation and our uh, digital, uh, that uh, Department of Science and Technology have joined hands Okay, so there are a lot of small, 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 small things, you know, on which uh, Air Force depends on day to day function uh, proactively can be extracted out of uh, these agreements. So overall, if I if I see that the jump that the Air Force can make in its capability, okay, by by this defense deals over these, you know, uh, over this canvas uh, is huge, but it will not come automatically, we will have to be uh, proactive to uh, extract that. Okay, that was my piece, uh, Adi. No, sir, like very interesting things, but I want to ask you one one simple question. Now, you haven't spoken about re-engineering. Is that is that a purposeful thing, or do you want to cover that about, separately? Because about re engineering what? sir. Re-engineering. Uh, I mean, no, uh, I'm not talking about cut, copy, paste, which the Chinese yeah. do. Uh, and a bad job at it as well. But I'm actually talking about serious re-engineering, which is also a science. I mean, you you, you can't just re-engineer something like that. So, <clears throat> No, of course. of course. You see, uh, what I said, you know, that that is a probably, I, I thought when I said absorption of technology, it probably had an element of that. You know, that how do I absorb technology? In the, in the sense that I get something, I look at it and I want to now have my own capability. Okay, uh, now uh, obviously it'll it'll have an element because uh, see what is re-engineering that I uh, I read a lot I read uh, a few books I mean you are essentially saying the difference between uh, plagiarism and research okay we want to do research we don't want to do plagiarism okay so that it is it obviously will pay that if I have the capability here. It's very important for, you know, those when they say that we'll set up MRO here or we will put the engine here. Why is it important to make, to do the transfer of technology in India? Okay, let's say if the analogy was drawn that they say, okay, 500 of your people can come to USA, sit here and, you know, learn how to make. is very different than them coming here in India and uh, making it here. 
okay now that is where we need to put our bright minds okay uh, that are uh, uh, young people unfortunately you know there is a trend now you go anywhere uh, people are not opting for the main streams of engineering which is your mechanical engineering or you know uh, other main streams like electrical engineering or things like that soft skills you know computer science uh, this uh, other kind of information because there there is a lot of market for that okay so we probably uh, are at a stage where we need to build up that capability tell people uh, i alluded to it last time also that moment these things come and there is a scope for mainstream engineering uh, to thrive then probably we will have that capability so hmm. once we have that capability i suppose by looking by learning by interacting we will after all we will have to engineer it now whether you call it engineering it or reengineering it i mean looking at after understanding it after learning it after watching it let's us assume that we will do it uh, in a legitimate uh, fashion and uh, be uh, self sufficient from that point okay. of view i think that's a fair answer so dusra uh, how will how do you think the predator coming in of course the mro is also going to happen here uh, <clears throat> will impact the domestic production because at the end of it a drone i'm sure people can make drones it's not that difficult and the safety features required are much lesser you can make the drones it's the tech that goes inside that drone which is the most important thing uh, how do you think that is going to go forward because the requirement of tech with regards to especially our areas let's say in the in the northeast when you go to these thick jungles and this and that you need some really serious stuff to peek into those kind of forests which probably the us doesn't have as a challenge because they don't have uh, an adversary with, with you know yeah yeah exactly no you see uh, uh, most of it you know what happens is it works on laws of physics okay what, yeah. whether something can penetrate weather or it can penetrate foliage or it can you know what kind of ir cameras advancements definitely uh, matter so with this technology coming once mro is set up here you know why mro is important it's not only commercial activity it is mm. engineering activity you know something you keep watching something over and over again over and over again how it is made you will learn something you know uh, over a period of time uh, you will become more knowledgeable okay though the technologies are very important in the sense that yes you're right you know i i need to see um, uh, in uh, jungle areas but exactly what do i need to see i mean you you are not required to see probably uh, so much in thick jungles you want to penetrate camouflage let's say okay i mean uh, in, in war fighting scenario i mean you know if i don't come to anti terror operations and purely from war fighting point of view i just need to have a look i mean defeat the camouflage that okay what what is uh, uh, camouflage or not be affected by adverse weather you know if it's raining or if it's cloudy or if it's foggy then i in, the, all these phenomena should not uh, affect me there are different uh, cameras ir cameras when we talk of you know medium wave long wave short wave they all have different uh, capabilities we yet do not have very great technology available at home which can make these uh, very high class infrared uh, cameras and probably we depend to a large extent on imported uh, stuff as far as lenses are concerned okay optical lenses or even uh, ir lenses okay so once probably incoming of this technology will definitely enhance uh, uh, these features it will get that uh, tech how and we will be able to improve uh, our you know even small drones capability now it will be very interesting if this high tech capability uh, comes in you you can't put very high tech capability into a very cheap drone because uh, then the overall cost goes up the very idea of a cheap drone gets defeated so mm. that whole technology has to become cheap and affordable for it to be put in an affordable drone otherwise that affordable drone will not remain uh, uh, affordable you know it you can't just uh, lose it now uh, kamakazi drone for example is the uh, flavor of, of uh, the day means you need to put technology i mean i need to send something which i can see uh, and launch and target and not be bothered of recovering it then everything that goes into it has to 
have decently high quality to do its job and to come at affordable price now that yeah. that is evolution yeah okay it will not come you can't import uh, things and put in there and then just lose them you know they, they will have to be uh, home grown so i think this coming in of this drone technology now how much uh, of it comes how much that uh, it's not very clear uh, that what technology transfer has been agreed as far as the drones are concerned where it's more uh, Uh, uh visible in in terms of uh, jet engines but uh, not so much uh, on the drone uh, side i i guess but uh, definitely it will uh, boost uh, capability to quite an extent i guess the drones are as it is a little more sensitive so they've kind of kept it on the wraps that's probably just my hunch i don't know uh so my last question and after that we'll get into the questions of uh, uh the audience uh the main thing about aviation again would be the scale of production and stuff like that and of course the geopolitics of having the engine being manufactured in india sir. now there is obviously indian market can give you a demand of i mean even let's say we decide to change all the engines and all the aircraft that we have today in terms of the fighters they spot 4 600 aircraft uh, beyond that what i mean to min- to maintain a certain profitability ge will have to kind of uh, export yes of course now uh, you from see india. they will have to ex- from india so it i don't think it will make any difference whether they export from usa or they export from india i mean to ge it will not make any difference the, what yeah. we are looking at is that india developing a capability where it can export its engine means what i'm looking at is that i acquiring a capability where i make kaveri engine and no export kaveri engine exporting no, no. 414 g no, is already my, exporting no no my question is not that my question is that about getting the experience of actually manufacturing such things at scale that's one of the biggest drawbacks in indian defense industry is the capability of actually scaling something scaling something yes no no of course but what i'm saying to begin with if g finds that it is more profitable or more uh, ah. you know uh, to make it in india while because of various considerations you know maybe real estate or labor or expertise whatever, yes. or commitment mm-hmm. of people whatever many or the government policies for that matter okay because we want to make it a success if it finds that it is uh, it's killing two birds with one stone in the sense that uh, living up to its obligations as the, as well as you know able to produce uh, uh more engines i mean if it produces two engines for india and along with that is able to produce two for itself uh, uh, where is the harm i mean you know in in that uh, uh, in that arrangement but the the point is that what i said that india will have to develop that kind of infra uh, structure mm. you know very quickly and to those standards you know uh, probably i it keeps coming up again and again that you know having missed industry or revolution etc etc our uh, our attitude towards technology or our attitude towards uh, finished thing is somewhere lacking you know we uh, in various things we just leave the last mile and it's very very visible you know from the beginning after all uh, who uh, p- uh, where do people reach this big factories from from small uh, places you know probably they start small then they grow and they reach these uh, places uh, the very attitude of you know our uh, technical institutions you know like uh, iits at small level and iits subsequently etc okay there are uh, very class education i mean educational institutions no doubt about it okay but in general majority of the engineering colleges or you see the go and see infrastructure and the facilities available at etc etc unless they grow up and people uh, you know have that attitude uh, we have come past that stage but there were cases you know where you uh, found that uh, most of the carpenters in india uh, won't screw in a screw they'll hammer it because uh, you didn't have the right tool to do that it's a very basic example you know but it is in india that needs to change you know from i mean people should not accept there has to be uh, evolution from that stage uh, to reach the world class standard that when you know a guy refuses to accept a wrong tool or does the uh, thing with the right uh, uh, kind of stuff so when we achieve that uh, capability which will have to be done there is no choice once you start dealing with the uh, 
you know big houses industrial houses and the way they want things done they will bring in that uh, you know uh, knowledge with them so we'll also have to uh, grow with that and uh, probably we'll uh, absorb that and be able to uh, do things we started from uh, drones and uh, we should or the engines for that matter i mean not drones when you said how much can we export and slowly i guess along with government now it is ge and hl tomorrow you will find probably uh, private houses uh, coming up in mean, tata is mm. already you know doing uh, tata zadan easel lines they're all with some business house doing something right so it is just that jet engine no one was touching it because firstly they were not sure whether it can be done or not you know whether will we ever have the technology and if at all we get that technology then who's going to buy uh, you know how many people can we export it to okay so it all starts that uh, your engine if your aircraft is good if you make a very good lca tomorrow and you start exporting lca your engine will automatically go along with it no so it is a kind of a overall thing you know i start making uavs that a form of engine now this uh, lc engine with a little uh, uh, less thrust uh, they are planning it to use it in our that tapas and uh, ghatak what is coming up you know it it will come up in that so tomorrow another version of reaper suppose mro is set up we make another version we have our own engine it comes up in that and that is exported so engine will go along with that i suppose that ecosystem will get created it's little premature to uh, you know talk about that as of now but uh, that's how things start i guess so last I, i'll take an addendum yes. chota sa we've also yes. got the other day you you spoke about the fact that safran is now you know offered the same thing for i think tejas mark 2 and rolls royce is talking about some other version of the aircraft i'm not i don't want to spell it out because i think i i slipped that it's either the tbd f or one of these uh, versions of the tejas uh the interesting thing that we 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 notice is that this you know it's it's like a ball rolling am i am i putting a right uh, analogy to it that ek aaya thoda successful hoga then you'll find a lot of these guys coming in and starting to do stuff and that's something which which is i uh, something i honestly i hope for ki you know you will have more and more of this sort of a thing happen because uh, it'll it'll kind of create that ecosystem within india of oh yes uh, of course and, and you know one good thing i think we have uh, done is uh, to diversify now. okay hmm. see it is uh, not i mean uh, g uh, deal uh, very welcome i don't think anybody on your channel or you know i am tempted to uh, at least uh, thank china for one aspect that it has you know pushed india into you know closer to and it has made it to wake up to these realities and go all out to acquire these technologies you know otherwise if china had remained benign like during its peaceful years peaceful rise of china what they call you know where they didn't do anything etc we also kind of i think remained in throttle back position you know we thought that nothing much is coming till mm. as late as 2008 2010 we didn't even talk about china you know i mean we were very uh, we were kind of assured that nothing much is going to happen okay we should have woken up at least 15 years before i think okay but now at least it has happened so as far as mk is concerned it's a futuristic thing so we we have not we have absolutely kept it open that whatever is done will be done in india's interest you know it is not uh, now there is no emotional play of anything you know you uh, do something in india's interest we are uh, all for you you know you uh, don't follow india's interest then we have other uh, people available so i think even the world even those players know this that you know uh, anybody who will talk in india's uh, interest probably stands to gain and will have an edge over the other one so i think we safran we rolls royce we anything they they all still see hope even in spite of all this deal going through i mean nobody has switched off to say that it's a fait accompli probably ge will also make in them for mk you know that's not the case they they are still trying that probably we still have a chance and that's by the fact that uh, i think we have very wisely kept our uh, cards close to chest like we say and we will see how it happens i mean it's purely my uh, appreciation i'm sure the uh, government uh, mod and mea and finance ministry they all are looking at these aspects yeah i mean the 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 whole lot of other things come into play there is no question into this it's, it's not just a singular paradigm if i may i mean uh, uh, absolutely 
and and i mean even even the understanding of these concepts is not something that you would uh, have a mass amount of people actually appreciate because these are uh, uh, very niche technologies one to work on to understand to talk about to deal with to you know it's not that that kar diya ho gaya types you know no of course not you know there are so many complexities in jet engine i mean you know you have to see it physically that what it is you know it it's like we said that much which much more complex than making a rocket uh, engine you know it is small 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 things you know there are uh, adi if you see those blades you know the tolerances are in millimeters and they are rotating so fast and they are you know uh, the kind of tensile loads on that or the kind of temperatures uh, generated in those uh, areas a kind of jet velocity going and to required to be maintained at a particular speed you know those nozzles are moving continuously left right uh, center etc etc there is a lot happening and the range that it needs to operate i mean it's not just like that that uh, we are kind of stuck or any any but why we uh, practically every country other than uh, these uh, you know major uh, four countries uh, nobody is uh, classically making uh, entire thing uh, on its own and you will it will take long time to become totally uh, independent because still that machining part of it you know even if you get everything how to machine that blade you know it it's very very uh, uh, typical uh, and these machines are very uh, advanced uh, and they their writers you know their uh, Uh, rules are there uh, uh, what should i say uh, laws are so stringent and technology i i saw one uh, german machine in uh, uh, lucknow okay they are making uh, they were uh, machining for you know our bombs i, I when i was uh, uh, offensive ops uh, looking after uh, in that portfolio i used to go and visit these factories who are making you know the shells for bombs So it's a German machine which he has put there. They bought it and they said only this guy will use it. And the kind of system they had fitted that if he removed that machine from that place anywhere else, it will stop functioning. <laughs> they had some chip in it. Okay, that it and it was continuously being monitored. That what is happening? You know, they uh, that technology transfer. When we say it's not easy, it's not uh, just to say that okay. Uh, so much technology will be transferred and it will be transferred you know it takes a lot of effort i i know what government must have gone through to get this kind of assurance that okay so much technology will be transferred because it's so close their life depends on that you know that how uh, that their uh, its technology is a lifeline so they uh, probably it's like uh, sharing giving away one portion of your body to someone you know? so it's that critical you know your own existence may depend on that the the sad thing is that with with so much work it's not something that you can walk up to someone and yaar jet engine wali machine de de yes no, of course like it's not yeah. like that and the sad it's sad not like that and uh, and even if it tells you adi that okay ye le le you can't just take it <laughs> you, you know it's not that it. simple ha I mean, means that that base has to be uh, built up koloki lift today i just tell you immediately that okay i'll give you you know 1000 quintals of grain what how i mean you will be zapped no that how are you going to do it where are you going to do it so you uh, that that is a kind of you know it is a load uh, which yeah. which has to be now realized in time that when we say that this is coming what is coming you know it it's just for i mean since we are talking uh, uh, i i am just trying to show the team scientists yeah, yeah. Uh, and people are aware of it it's not that i am educating those people i am just uh, you know trying to bring out the nuances for our our friends and yes, you well. know people who are not at that level so it's not that they don't know but what i'm saying or it needs uh, all that uh, stuff to do that yeah yeah it's it's quite a this thing and you know it's it's funny that uh, when you know such important things happen and these are these are impactful in the sense in the next two decades three decades the impact will still be felt of, yes of, yes of, if and let me say that if things are successful of course the impact will be felt at least two three decades down the line and when when people will be studying it yaar ha 23 mein something happened and yes, you know our, yes. our industry was able to churn out so that's something which is interesting and yeah. i'm so sure now, they will also uh, I, the, yeah 
they they need to you know what what i'm saying is you we need to make a kind of task force you know mm. which now in a focused way monitors this you know it has that okay this 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 was to come and like you know every regular feedback to see are we moving up the graph if you're not moving up the graph where is the hurdle not that somebody says that okay i will make in then 5 years and you check with them after 5 years of course it will not happen but what i'm saying is that those loopholes need to be fixed you know you make a task force interagency task force or whatever you call whatever. it mm-hmm. that which uh, which very very critically uh, monitors it uh, you know not that you come to know when a deadline has been crossed you should know well in advance if a deadline is likely to be crossed and there must be very good reason for that you know i am sure the government can go back to the oem or to the government if there are any uh, slippages uh, etc so i think it will be monitored very very closely and uh, we should be much better off than our other uh, earlier experiences of dttie or something like that they were terrible <laughs> but in any case i mean i'm looking for oh, I mean, those are for things to learn of course yeah bright the future yes sir Yes, sir. Yeah, guys, let's get into your questions and comments and thoughts and whole lot of other things. Let's uh, please, but before that, like the video, subscribe. I say this every time, but I still gotta because liking is most importantly. Baki sab alag hai yaar. Like karo because a lot of people must watch these kind of discussions. You know, these are the problem is the discussion that we're having on TV today with regards to engines and MQ9 Reapers and stuff like that is politics. it's absolute crack crass politics that actually takes down the entire depth of the discussion at all so that's not this is the kind of discussion that we must watch because it will actually tell you what we have what we don't what we've not done and what we need to do and that's what sir has actually brought out so that's i'm i'm actually very very happy with this uh, particular talk uh, you can you know uh, contribute to the dev talks efforts you've got the qr code up there or the join button or the super chat in your chat box let's get into you, your questions hey tejas thank you so much for joining in as a youtube member first question sir uh, should the ge deal be considered as an end of an ind- indigenous jet engine program without an application on the horizon for decades into the future there won't be any div- deliverable for the grte that's an interesting twist no, twist of yeah, yeah no not at all you know i i have been saying it it's a, it's a good that uh, he's thought about it that you know the biggest uh, lacuna in, you know which uh, anybody that i have met is that uh, you know you should not go on on to a throttle back mode that okay now technology is coming now i sit back and relax no not at all the your indigenous development has to continue okay and i even during my talk i said that we are not content at only making more 414s i need to make more kaveris and the derivatives of kaveri i will personally consider this deal to be a success if my kaveri comes up i mean india's kaveri engine comes up okay the along with that means what is the definition of learning what definition of learning is that i become overall uh you know knowledgeable that if you teach me one thing i should be uh, with that knowledge i should be able to do a similar thing uh, elsewhere not only that right so that is gaining knowledge so not at all i mean if it becomes end of the indigenous development i mean that i would say it, it would be the worst deal uh, we made it because then uh, we became passive it is not so you know it is it will uh, it it will accelerate uh the like that indexx you know again indo us accelerator program what, the, what they have uh, come out with i think it should accelerate our indigenous uh, program and that will be the test and i use this word uh, uh, if you noticed an expression that the litmus test would be how does our kaveri engine come up okay so I, in my talk in my discourse in my uh, of uh, your channel also whoever i have talked to we have not lost focus on on uh, kaveri engine that that should not be lost sight of gtre uh, has done lot of effort it has uh, covered some ground uh, that effort has to continue there is no doubt in my mind about that i mean i i must say that's a very interesting question uh, for another aspect of it that there 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 has to be the indigenous qu- quality and i think with the whole with the with, with the whole atmanirbharta this thing i don't think that will be lost because it will uh-huh. also be the pride of uh, 
the DRT, DRDO, and all these guys. Yeah, like we've got something of our own, and we yeah. are also building up and stuff like that. So I can't get tired of uh, saying that. That and I again used another expression that in this euphoria of that engine, you know, G has come, G has come. We are not to lose sight of our own program. You know that indigenous program. And we, I mean, you also. You also picked up the Chinese program last time, the WS9, WS11, WS15. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. they claim to have the WS11 in operations and stuff like that. But we, as per the reports, is damn underpowered. It's not able to actually produce what they are trying to say. I mean, the Chinese advertise something and the reality is something. But with India, it's going to be a very different game altogether. Whatever we do, it's going to be out in the public domain. It's it not is going legitimate. To be, you know, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. whatever you do openly, you can do it uh, with a different stance and with a different confidence. That's you know, correct. rather than uh, uh, being very uh, uh, underhand uh, about it. So that your transaction is much more transparent and uh, much more uh, uh, visible. So you're more confident and you can do things uh, that much better without uh, fearing any sanctions or whatever. That, that's, I mean, that, I think that's, that, uh, that would be my main point with regards to this entire thing. Ishan, thanks so much. He says, Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, Ishan. Thank you. So, okay. Yeah. Shritik says, uh, sir, Saffron is offering 100% TOT for the Amka engine. Should we go for that or continue with the GE414 and continue to upgrade them over time? Should we diversify or stick with GE itself? I, uh, you know, this is a uh, tough question. Now, what happens is Safran is offering 100% TOT. It will have to be seen what GE has to offer to begin with, what turns out better uh, for us uh, in the long run. Uh, it is, uh, I don't think this question, you know, can be answered like that, that should I stick with GE or should I stick? Like I said, it's not an emotional decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is going to be based on purely technical decision that what do I need? Firstly, on the QRs for MCA are set, you know, that what kind of aircraft do I want? MCA. Okay. I, I mean, I'm going to fit for, I probably may not fit 414 engine in that. It will have different uh, aerodynamics. It will have a different uh, size, shape, you know, etc. What engine... Uh, uh, fits in that, what is the kind of uh, power that I require in that engine, what engine will be required for that. Now, for that engine, who's ready to give how much at what cost is, I think, what will uh, decide. But the bottom line is that whosoever does it, we will have the best deal, which is in India's interest, that and best deal when I say the uh, maximum transfer uh, of technology, okay, the to uh, with whatever power uh, engine we are looking at, at uh, the best price to us. I mean, the best uh, price when I say it includes everything, uh, all, all favorable uh, conditions. So, whosoever offers it, I think India will go with that. Not really that we will stick with GE or we will go to Saffron or should we uh, diversify from that point of view that just not putting all eggs in one basket as uh, it's not uh, uh, like that, in my opinion. He just asks, uh, are we getting tech transfer of the Bliss compressor blade? To, uh, blade in technology transfer is so that is a great thing. Even Russia doesn't have that. I'm not sure of this. See, again, uh, like, you know, so far it's just an MOU signed between G and HL. And we said in the beginning that yeah, details will be known uh, as to what uh, uh, what kind of, you know, uh, uh, technology from Blade's point of view or from, uh, you know, last time there was a question about Crystal Blade, not not on your show, but uh, in the comments when I read that, will, will we get Crystal Blade uh, technology. Now, you can't look at crystal blade in isolation. Okay. Now, if you look at blade, you know, there are peculiarities in blades also. There are blades which have got, uh, uh, which are uh, strength bearing uh, kind of uniform. They, they are called uni access or uh, some access, uh, you know, a blade. That means they can bear equal strength in all directions. Then there are DS blade, directional strength blades. Okay which can bear directions in one axis more than other axis, you know. So 
uh, when I know the rotation of my engine that where which axis it is producing overload, so it may be better to have a DS kind of blade because I can compromise. I don't need strength on the axis which don't need strength. You get my point. So I I need strength on the axis which need more strength. So the directional strength blade. Why why I'm explaining this is now you come to crystal blades. Crystal blades also the way they are formed. You know they are uh, uh, they are very good from the point of view of uh, temperature bearing or you know the metallurgy point of view etc. But their usage is, in the engine is very complicated. You know their uh, fragments. I mean I won't go into deep engineering because I won't be able to explain it here without diagrams. But they can't be used so simplistically. You know they are like fibers. You know carbon uh, composites. What is the difference between metal and composites? You know composites. I mean they are glamorous. You know we say oh composite material this. But their strength in certain directions is not as uh, good as metal. You know, they are light. They have a lot of advantages, but uh, they they have limitations uh, with respect to metal. So this uh, uh, blades also, it is good to have crystal blade technology if you have the corresponding technology as to how to use them. Okay. Similarly, these uh, getting this technology etc. Uh, will depend on uh, what are the other corresponding technologies uh, that we have. I think in in a little while it will we'll come to know that what is that twenty percent is uh, anybody's guess what is going to remain in that twenty uh, percent and it will uh, become uh, clear once I believe the contract is signed. The problem, sir. I'm I mean I, I'm not trying to. The question was great. Uh, please don't take me the wrong way. Uh, Tejas especially, but the problem in India is that there are there are self style defense experts who have read three papers and say crystal blade nahi aa raha to ab to ban hi nahi sakta i mean yeah. you know it's like i don't understand uh, if you drive let's say a maruti swift for that matter and suddenly you given a ferrari will you be able to drive it you not you got to build up from a swift to the next car you got to you know graduate into it and i find this the whole yeah. narrative you know you know there are there are certain detractors who would want to put the government down it's all politics you know at the end of it which creates this confusion with regards to this thing and i believe in one thing and i'm i'm going to just say this that a lot of these decisions with regards to what where how would have the forces behind it the air force chief and the vice chief and whoever is in that committee would be advising the government ki yaar ye theek hai ye theek nahi hai so and they are they are the users yeah they are the guys on the ground wearing the uniform let them do it you know because no no they know of course what can be absorbed uh, yeah no I'm, this I'm, uh, uh, yeah yeah no, they, there are uh, honest uh, quest also i mean you know like suppose uh, someone has like you said read in a uh, paper also or something you know maybe uh, he's intrigued ke bhai ye uh, this probably is a no sir there uh, are there are few uh, technology I, I, yeah I, the next question will bring it out i i i just read this before putting it up there and i got this thought in my head that i i just put it out there some so called experts are expressing concerns on youtube that s400 will not be able to tell friend from foe for nato aircrafts you are the real experts are please share your views now you know this is the problem there are there are there are these few people who read some western narrative yeah. and they yeah. start becoming defense experts and going to programs and start talking and oh oh this can never happen this can never happen this can i mean nobody is that stupid that you'll buy a 5 billion dollar system which will not tell you friend from foe and which will not do no, uh, the yeah. the point is who decides friend from foe it is like saying suppose if i have i had a stain gun and i buy ak47 and someone is saying that the ak47 bullet will not be able to tell friend from foe so is that the bullet which is deciding who's friend or foe or the person who's firing it so in the air defense scenario when the missiles are launched when the target is designated friend or foe is not decided by the missile missile is fired at the target friend or foe has been decided by the system you know your air defense system your control system what we have the integrated you know uh, system it is that person who decides whether it is friend or foe okay he gets the signals he gets the iff signals etc based on that he designates the target and he launches the missile missile will go at the target which has been designated so s400 will go on the designated target 
target designation would have been done after ascertaining whether the target is friend or foe by various means you have secondary radars you have you know uh, transponders you have whole lot of things you know uh, codes etc incidentally when it uh, now to tell you the friend or foe i mean just digressing if you with your permission 30 seconds you know that Absolutely. gary powers uh, that uh, uh, incident okay u2. that u2 u2 which was lost they lost one mig 19 also immediately yeah. after that okay and why was it mig 19 lost if you remember it was first may 1960 when that incident But, happened hmm. okay first may 1960 and the 30th evening or it was a labor it was a chutti or holiday there in the morning when that mig 19 was scrambled he had not drawn the fresh iff code uh, identification of friend and foe code so when that system wanted to uh, inquire or you know check his uh, status he was not able to certify as friend and that air defense missile shot him because the ground system yet didn't know that u2 has been shot so the mig 19 was lost behind it for the want of uh, iff now that missile which fired a defense missile which shot at uh, the same missile shot a fo just a little while back you know it then it shot a friend that's not missile's fault it was the system which could not ascertain so s400 per se i mean you know i i took a little time to clarify this s400 per se will not decide a friend or fo it is that entire system it is integrated in our Entire yeah. scheme of things which will decide front or foe. I I hope it clarifies. No, absolutely, sir. And I think just building up to this, sir, I saw red flag 2008 debrief. It's a little old uh, about uh, the IAF uh, by a US colonel. He was saying that the IAF didn't have data links, uh, relied on AVAX, and that's why they lost so many friendly in this. Is this accurate, sir? Do we have data links now? Yes, we we are building. We yet don't have. I mean, data links we have from uh, uh, ground to air. You know, are there, but uh, we are building. Like, if you are talking of data link, like link sixteen, which the NATO uses. Okay, that is a different uh, ball game. You know, that is that link is that people are able to transfer image or the information from aircraft to aircraft, etc. You know, like I do not need to transmit on my radar. Some other, uh, you know, if acts transmitting and transfer the picture onto my aircraft etc without me uh, knowing about it that we are building sdr you know our uh, software defined radio what we call okay uh, is coming up uh, but in that possibly could be reason that when there are too many aircraft and you know you are not careful about it uh, you you can uh, make a mistake and why go that far uh, adi we had unfortunate uh, accident uh, on 27th february where Uh, you know, unfortunately, we lost a helicopter to spider. It was a clear case of uh, misidentification. Yeah, one of the things is, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. This uh, integration and this and that data links and stuff like that is not something that anybody will give you. They probably give you engine tech, but they won't give you this. This is something yeah. each air force needs to build up for its own sake. Build up, yeah, because you it it's very very integral. Uh, yeah. yeah, it it's integral to your systems. You see what happens. You will not even give I... it to your best friend. I mean. yeah no and you can't even integrate you see what happens is the kind of uh, uh, system it rides on or the kind of you know uh, the base structure it does then you have to make everything as per that uh, otherwise you know you can't just it's not a uh, plug and play you know that i i got this data system now i put it here it's not like external hard drive that you put it with this computer or that computer you know it it's the whole architecture uh, needs to be uh, built up like that i guess Batraji says, uh, "Sir, Istro is also in talk with Blue Origin to send crew modules on JSLV three, which is a major deal if Istro pulls it off." I guess so. I, I am afraid. I mean, I may not be able to uh, uh, say much on this, but uh, there is uh, NASA and Istro, of course, are uh, you know collaborating in a. Uh, Uh, big way, uh, I suppose this this must be true. I mean, I I didn't really uh, uh, dwell on that uh, side, so I won't be able to comment very very authentically uh, on that. But I am sure it will be good in case it comes through. Uh, Mr. Yatin, I think uh, you know I don't discuss politics on this channel, so let the opposition or whoever they can fight among themselves about the pricing and this and that. 
it's away from this because we are not here to discuss that. There are enough people discussing that and I'm not getting into it. Respectfully, I don't do politics on this channel, so I'm not going to take your question. Uh, so why don't we buy engine technology from Russia? It'll be cheap on their engines in Su-57, better than the GE engine. We'll, we will be far ahead quickly in less cost. Please ask, sir. No, why, uh, you know, we have been, uh, why don't we buy engine technology? I don't know what is meant by buying engine technology. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it'll it. have to be, uh, nobody sells it. It'll have to be transferred by, you know, by your goodwill and uh, good work, uh, etc. But I think uh, the, uh, it, it, you can uh, take that technology also. No, I, I suppose the engine technology per se, uh, they are similar you know, uh, means it is how you put it together, it makes it a Russian engine or a Western engine. It is the other controls, the way it operates, its robustness, its reliability, etc. All those issues and the uh, engineering involved comes up. Yes, Russian engines, no doubt about it. They are, uh, uh, they are good. We are ourselves uh, used, I mean, we have been flying Russian fleet only so far, Su-30 engine, very powerful engine, okay, uh, 122 kilonewtons each engine, I guess. Okay, so uh, they are powerful. They are uh, very good. But uh, uh, I don't think that offer would have existed and this offer uh, came before or uh, now the kind of uh, situation is there. You know, Russia, I think uh, to deal with Russia has become a little problematic now. You know, I, I mean, we had problem in paying after those sanctions, you know, your uh, uh, currency issues. Uh, I think it's becoming difficult to even pay for the oil. We have got so much of oil, uh, you know, we have, uh, I guess, taken from Russia. Now you get into more imports and with the current situation, I don't know, they'll be in a position to uh, support India. How far as far as the defense equipment is uh, concerned. But uh, I, you know, baseline is, I would say, you need to get Indian engine <coughs> technology from wherever it comes. You know, improvements we can see. I mean, if, if Russia was to offer you parallelly or, you know, along with that, there is no harm. I'll say, okay, you also come here. We'll, we'll make another plant. Probably we'll start making a different kind of engine. I mean, there's no harm um, in doing that. Just, I mean, if you have the capacity, okay. Why don't mm -hmm. we buy Russian or this thing? I don't think it was an offer. I mean, we never did that. Uh, uh, we didn't pick one of the two. You know, like this probably question uh, would be more relevant if we say that both technology uh, were on offer. Why didn't we go for Russian technology, which is more robust or which is more reliable or which is easy or which would have come better, etc. It wasn't even uh, on offer, I guess. You know, one of the most interesting thing that uh, is there is that you can buy, you can't buy stuff. They don't, you don't, you know, you don't do that. As a matter of fact, uh, let me just say this. I am sure, sir, you will know this, that uh, the, Rus the the Chinese had ordered about, I think, uh, 56 Su-35s from the Russians. They get, delivered 24. The Chinese started re-engineering them yeah. and literally cut, copy, paste. The Russians said, bugger yeah. off, you're not giving you any more. Absolutely. Absolutely. You so, know, when they started, uh, yeah, same thing. You know, Su-27, actually, you know, they uh, also, when they started transferring technology, that is from where they started copying the engine, you know, from that WS9, which came from there. Okay. They started making, once they realized that they are, uh, you know, have started copying, that is when they uh, uh, pulled their hand that uh, enough has enough, you know, yeah. they, and, and the Russian technology, what we say, it didn't even go to like, you know, at one time, I mean, it was legitimately uh, transferring technology from them to make aircraft. It didn't transfer engine technology even to China, legitimately. So they not, even sir, they, with it, you know? yeah. Russians, Russians won't. Why would the Russians give it, sir? But sir, one of the things that I, I, I mean, which, which comes out here is that there is there is obviously there is a certain amount of effort which is required at the back end to create a infrastructure to to actually test you know and yes. testing facilities is something that you spoke about the other day as well do you see any sort of development in that particular front because i i find yeah. there's a gap there you there is a gap there is a big gap yes there is a big gap uh, you know what happens is we lack you know what happens is now our R&D has been suffering. We have now created National uh, Research Fund, NRF, okay? 
Uh, mm. In the rather late in the day, I would say our R and D. I mean, we hardly been spending any uh, percentage of GDP on R and D. Okay, now it's a it's been a catch twenty two situation in a vicious cycle. They because people probably uh, said uh, you know learn from there, do something piecemeal, uh, not much emphasis on doing research and development because your economy uh, was a little not doing so well earlier. You know when when that whole our military aspirations have been uh, there since long after all we started uh, you know uh, economies under 1 trillion dollar when we started talking of defense etc and gradually it has grown so without that they didn't know whether to create testing facility for this first or to create product and use other testing facilities testing facilities are all over for example kaveri engine we do not yet have uh, credible testing facilities and i think most of the testing is done in moscow i mean in russia okay there oh. is a there is a requirement that uh, you need to have a, a flying aircraft uh, testing aircraft because this engine incidentally when you make you test it in wind tunnel etc then what do you do do you straight away put it into a fighter aircraft and fly you don't you have to fly it and where does it fly if not in the fighter aircraft it flies one of the in one of the transport aircrafts you know like il76 for example it has four engines so one of its nacelles nacelle is you know converted where which houses this engine and then they take it up and then you know they probably switch off other engines and test it only this engine how does it behave and you know uh, in whatever configuration they switch off or uh, get it low power i mean that is how it is tested in the, the air we need to create that we have uh, you know it can be done on il76 or a boeing or you know any big transport aircraft which supports uh, uh, jet engine uh, configuration so unless we create that uh, how can we uh, i mean you can't really be indigenous engine developer if you don't have the complete testing facility because even if i have all the technology i do everything if i uh, don't know how to test it how do you move forward and at each improvement there is a test point you see you uh, are if you go to uh, our ast that you know our premium institution or testing that aircraft and system testing establishment you and talk to them when you improve capability of something uh, it has to be tested at each point so and each point is a laborious point if you do not have that uh, testing facility in house then you can't really build in uh, indigenous capability there is a serious not uh, thought which needs to be uh, given there and i'm sure it is given and now see earlier probably they didn't create that because they didn't know how much are we going to use it but now if the whole transfer of technology is coming i think uh, this will have to be created there is no choice in the matter i guess interesting sir this was a very very good discussion i must say uh, you Thank know you it, so it eliminates the the it actually busts the truth from the narrative and makes it paints a very realistic picture of what we have uh what we need to do and what we need to kind of go forward uh there is a just a comment i i i can't make yeah. head or tail of this is too technical yeah. for me but it says as far as i know directionally solidified solidified ds blades cannot be used in high pressure turbine turbine due to high temperature tolerance needed do let me know if otherwise no probably see all, all i said uh, uh, this ds blade uh, it uh, they can be used probably the blade technology if it improves i mean my interaction with the uh, gtre uh, says that you know when they explain that okay these are the kind of uh, blades uh, which are there and in kaveri i believe they are planning to use ds blade as per my information yeah. i i i, yes, I uh, it probably can be uh, you know the gentleman can uh, rethink on this sir uh, as i was saying this was a brilliant discussion you know we 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 threadbare this thing and i as i was saying painted a very realistic picture of what we have and what we need to do in the future of course this is a very nascent stage of development in terms of uh, you know the jet engine and this and that it's not something which is easy uh, it is rocket science if i may <laughs> yes know. sir more than that <laughs> yeah it is it is actually the term rocket science rather than um, um, yeah you know everything else and you know there's also another factor that we need to understand all of us we in india today have gotten a little too 
uh, one emotional and two demanding of things because one that we I, I like to believe only one simple thing. Just forget what happened in the past. You started now and let's talk from now. You know, you can keep cribbing about the past and living in the past rather than we are now here. It's 2023. Let's make sure that there's an engine up and running and in, in a aircraft or a test bed by the next two years or something like that. Two, three, four years, whatever timeline it gets fixed. I'm not a technical guy and stick with the timeline. Yes, and you know, prove a point, and we can see that we can see that happening with regards to HAL, with regards to the development and the deliveries as well. They've been doing a little better. A lot more is required. I think that is that yes. is the bottom line. We need to buck up. We need to pull our sock, socks up, uh, and we need to do these things. There is just no point in looking at ki yaar it, it time se kar rahe, kyun nahi kara? Ye, wo, that discussion can keep on happening. The discussion should be this, what sir actually said, with regards to what needs to be noticed, needs to be known, and needs to be done. As always, sir, learning experience. Thank you so much. And looking forward for the next one very soon. Thank you, Abhi. Then, I always enjoy. You have wonderful audience. Pleasure interacting with you. Thank you so much. Jayan, sir.